Hey, thank you so much for watching. I am Pippi Peterson. So for the longest time, I have been having to replace my um, my coolant. Uh, way more than it should have been, though I hadn't investigated. Well, recently when I was up here checking the fluids in my RV, oil and transmission fluid and such, uh, I actually saw while the engine was running that it indeed was dripping. So I, I had to take some panels down and um, source out where this drip was coming from. And I found it and I figured out what the part was. And I, I'm gonna replace it now. And I just want to convey the message that sometimes you might have a problem. However, if it's you know a little part that can easily be removed and taken to an auto parts store, sometimes you can totally do that yourself instead of paying, you know, a hundred dollars or more, even two hundred, um, for somebody else to do it. So uh, with my own investigating, I was able to find it, and um, uh, I'm going to replace that part right now and hope that the one that I got actually matches. Otherwise, I will take in the old part and just have them order that and return the, the one that I thought it was. So here's the little bugger that's dripping, and you can see it's just got these two cables or two hoses that come to it from this side and two from this side and what this actually is is is, is the heat transfer valve so it transfers heat it takes um, either on the top one or the bottom one it'll take the warm liquid in and if you have the heater turned on in the front of the dash it'll actually let the heat go through and it'll come up one of these hoses and then into the um, the thermostat here right here and it'll go through these cables and um, send hot air back so so um, these are all like one directional pipes so anyway it's this little guy he's a plastic piece and um, just has a crack so uh, luckily it's very easy I mean it's like right it's al almost couldn't get easier to in a position to work on and um, all I have to do is Hopefully, fingers crossed, unscrew these guys, open the clamps, pull off the hoses from on each side, and then um, take the plastic guy out. And then uh, this is the new one. So it's possible I got, um, I can actually get these in a, a bigger tube, and I might need to. So, but uh, we'll see when I take off the old one. Also, as I'm doing this, um, since this uh, coolant flows through here, I have not turned on the engine for um, like a few days because I want it to be totally cool. I don't want any pressure um, built up in the engine coolant, which is definitely possible. So it's as cool as it can get right now. I'm actually going to have to get my smaller screwdriver for those guys, my stubby one. So I've gotten the first two hoses off um, and then I'm noticing that 
back here, this hose is so um, kinked from this uh, hose holder or whatever you want to call it. So, and, and I'm having to like kind of move this a bit to get these pieces off. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is relocate this bolt and move this whole um, holding loop thing a little bit over here which will reduce the kink because I don't want um, a kink to eventually lead to a crack. So before I get these last two off, I'm going to take this thing off and um, relocate it over here or just take it off for now. Alright, so I, I got it out and uh, some of the hoses are dripping a little bit so like these ones I swung up to kind of put up here so they don't have the coolant leak out. So I'm looking at this and comparing it to my new one and the little uh, arms are longer but I think it's uh, I think it might work. So the old one is out and now the new one is ready to go in. The old one actually definitely feels um, a little more heavy duty, <laughs> so um, hopefully this one's just a little bit lighter weight because they got better at making them, but uh, I think, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it'll actually work. So I discovered when I um, took it out, so some tips that I've learned, uh, <clears throat> like, well, well, for example, when I took this one out, um, I realized that when I was going to be putting the new one back in, it's better to put in the, the pump connection before connecting the last two hoses. So um, that was convenient, it was like a little lesson I had removing it. So. Um, now it'll be easier to put the pump connection in because I'm going to do it a different way than I did taking it out. And the second highly recommended tip is when you're removing anything. This one's a little obvious, but um, for example, I've replaced a couple solenoids. Like, I totally recommend taking a picture or even like five different pictures from different angles of the part already hooked up before you remove it uh, just in case you know sometimes you think you're going to be uh, maybe going to the auto parts store and coming back and replacing it immediately and you've totally remembered how to do it but um, you know sometimes life happens and you don't get to it the same day so uh, definitely take a picture of anything that has the slightest bit of complexity to it so those are just my tips. All right, I got the two back ones in and the pump, whoops. These front two hoses had a fair bit of um, coolant in them, so I'm trying to wipe up some of that coolant.
All right, so that was like the easiest installation of a part ever. Um, however, I haven't put in the um, the little uh, clamps yet, um, but it's all set and ready to go. And I'm lucky that I unscrewed that little loop that was holding it against the wall because uh, this part, those arms were a little bit longer. So I would have had to do that anyway. So it's convenient that I had already done that. So I'm going to get this pump um, all tightened in and ready to go before I refasten it to the back wall back here. That way I know kind of where it hangs and um, how it wants to sit more naturally. That old kink is making this thing hard to get over. There we go. Also, um, another tip, totally recommend, like I almost didn't wear gloves because I was like, oh, it's just a, you know, a little thing, a little heat transfer valve. But um, I'm glad I did because when I took these off, a bunch of, um, coolant fluid comes rushing out so and all over the gloves Alrighty, so that sucker's all screwed back in there. Um, and so now for the moment of truth, always the most exciting and scary part of any um, parts fix. So we'll see if it works. So I just want to add one more thing about this project. Um, since I did it myself, <clears throat> it cost me the trip to go to the auto parts store and back. And um, I think I got it for $21. Um, some of the different valves were like 17, I think one was 11. Um, but anyway, this is the one that fit my RV. And I also want to make a note that I had to learn by going to auto parts stores and um, going to the Chevy dealer because um, Bounder is a, a Chevy chassis. Uh, like this little valve that I just replaced, it actually has nothing to do with Chevy. Um, it's just, you know, like once they get the chassis built on the motorhomes, then they just add like whatever parts they need from whatever manufacturer. So, um, like you don't have to go to a motorhome store to find a valve or a part and I would totally recommend starting if you're gonna look starting at like an auto parts store like Napa or something like that Napa or um, well I can't think of the name but the, along those lines um, and they'll save you a lot more money um, I, I got a solenoid once at a uh, a motorhome store it costed seventy dollars and then I went to the auto parts store and I saw they had them for like 20 to 50 <laughs> so definitely start with like the more mainstream places um, I guess in a way it's not supporting like small businesses but um, sometimes you're a small business yourself <laughs> and saving thirty dollars on a piece can um, is a big deal so Anyway, good luck if you are troubleshooting 
your RV projects and uh, subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos.